skater boy. All around me are familiar faces, friends and family. The huge hall I am currently standing in was supposed to be half empty. Instead, it's loaded with people. And with this crazy virus, there's not supposed to be that many people in it. As I am waiting for my name to be called, I can feel the nervousness taking over me. My fear of needles is taking over me. A few drops of sweat run down my face. I take a look at my sister in the front. She is not afraid of something so tiny and meaningless like I am, but I just can't help it. I just might get a panic attack and in this room loaded with people, every second there is less and less oxygen to breathe. And then the government says they care about their people. My butt. They care about nothing but themselves. This deadly virus just might kill them as well. Seems like they don't even care about that. I've already lost way too much due to this virus. Nearly half of my school is either dead or hospitalized. My grandparents on my mother's side died a few months back. It's crazy what this virus has done in just a year. It began like a normal fever with cough and now it's far more serious. They say your body temperature can rise to deadly temperatures. You get so itchy it makes you want to peel your skin off. The most important thing about this virus is that it spreads with enormous speed and kills like plague, within hours. Jessica Landberg. My sister's name was shouted and she took a step forward. With this move, I was finally able to see chairs and equipment. Three metal chairs with white pillows were placed six feet apart from each other. On the right side of each chair, there was a little metal table. Each table had needles, bottles with vaccine, alcohol bottles, and some cotton wool. Even though vaccination is going fast, with this many people, it could take days. April Landberg. Great. My turn to be vaccinated with vaccine no one believes in. They have probably put another virus in this vaccine. As I sat down in the chair, I gave my right hand to the nurse. I could feel my palms and forehead sweat. My legs were shaking in fear. I never understood why I fear needles. I was vaccinated many times before. Not for the virus, though. And every time, I survive. This fear just keeps entering my life. I strained my muscles in my right arm and closed my eyes. I could feel the needle breaching through my skin. I even felt this liquid entering my system. After a few seconds of holding the needle inside my arm, I could feel how the nurse takes it out. That was way too scary. After I was done, she gave me a paper with some possible side effects from the vaccine. We had another formal vaccine three months ago, but that one didn't show quite well. Some people who were vaccinated with the first vaccine said that it just made easier for the virus to attack their system. I was still breathing heavily under my face mask. Everyone needs to wear masks when inside and outside only if you wish. Even though the virus is hitting my country like crazy, cafes are still open. Would the government please explain that? As we escaped that suffocating overloaded hole, I finally got to breathe fresh air. Wasn't that bad, now was it? A 25-year-old woman who is soon going to be a mother says. Sometimes I hate my siblings. It was horrible. That room has exactly 0% of oxygen in it. I was mad at this point because she just makes fun of me and my stupid irrational fear. My parents already took the vaccine because they are more likely to get the virus. So my sister and I fell in the second plan. I wish I didn't have to take this vaccine. I'm going out with friends so you should walk home. She was already gone by the time she finished this sentence. I have a half an hour walk to get to my house. I hate her. I live in a medium sized city. It's not enormous, but it's not small either. As I was walking home, I was reading the paper the nurse had given me. I don't like these side effects. Dizziness, nausea, in some cases, even fainting. As I crossed the road, I decided to walk through the central park. Winter has just passed by, so trees are nicely green colored. Some people are having picnics, kids are running around, playing while the sun is shining on their skin. True happiness. Lately, you can see this only in kids. It's nice how they are happy and have no clue that the world is literally falling apart. Adults, on the other hand, are worried and depressed. They fear this virus, mostly because they don't want their kids to watch them die this young. As much as they don't want to watch their kids die either. If I could, I would erase this virus, save both people and the planet. I was just about to leave Central Park when in the corner of my eye I saw a person, but when I tried to see what's going on and who it is, it was far too late. Ouch! I was groaning in pain. I hit the floor and landed on my butt. My palms were scratched. <sighs> okay. I wasn't bleeding. 
I looked in front of me and saw a young man sitting on the floor holding his head. His skateboard was upside down. I'm really sorry, he said and stood up. He approached me and gave me a hand. He helped me stand up. No worries. I was mad at the beginning, but when I saw how cute he is, his styling was a basic street style nowadays. Black pants with lots of pockets, an orange baggy t-shirt, a little bag across his shoulder, and black shoes. He has short brown curly hair. He has a beautiful clear skin on his face, long lashes, and nice thin eyebrows. His eyes were green with a little spice of brown. You want to grab some coffee? He seriously asked that. Which normal person would refuse him? Um, sure. I said calmly so he wouldn't realize I'm being hysterical. His name is Noah Black. He is 19, just a year older than me. The nearest cafe that serves coffee to go is a few miles away. Most of our time walking together was silence. Awkward silence. So, have you taken vaccine yet? He asked out of nowhere. Yeah, a few minutes before you crashed into me, I smiled. He started apologizing again. I started laughing. He behaved like he crashed me with a car and not a skateboard. As we finally got to the coffee shop, he offered to pay for mine. That was also very sweet of him. I would never give it a single thought I would randomly run into a guy that is so sweet like him. Even though he crashed into me, he apologized a hundred times already and he even paid for my coffee. If you ask me, this is too nice to be true. But hey, maybe the universe decided to be nice to me after a long time of cruelty. Cheers, he nearly yelled and started drinking coffee and walking forward. I was left behind at this point. He cheered as if we were drinking alcohol. As I ran back to him, I decided to start a conversation. Did you take the vaccine? I asked while looking at his face. He has such a beautiful face. A long time ago, I was accepted at my new workplace, but I couldn't work if I didn't take the vaccine. He is a cheerful person. He shines with positive energy. Even though it's the first time in my life that I'm seeing him, I have a feeling like we have known each other since we were kids. So, you don't go to school? I was really curious about him. I dropped out last year. I am working now, so it feels the same. He was explaining to me. Why did you drop out, if I may ask? I am nervous about asking this question. I feel like it's a little bit too personal, but I couldn't resist. My parents died of the virus, so I had to pay the rent and things. His look changed. We were walking right next to a supermarket, and I was really craving some ice cream, so we went in to get some. As we walked into the shop, we were fooling around and making fun of things. He was taking a few photos of me with some huge teddy bears that we don't even have money for. Have you tried these? He was showing me some candies I've never seen in my life. I took the packaging from him and took a better look. There were some blue gummy bears that had a sour patch around them and something flowing inside. No, but they look horrible. I said and gave him a confused look. Oh, come on, you should try them. They're the best, trust me. And so we bought that together with some ice cream. We bought a small packaging of ice cream in a box and took some plastic spoons from the shop. As we walked out, we opened those gummy bears. I was looking at him in shock. You barely opened these and you already ate half of them. I was laughing so hard when I saw his face. He had candy flowing all around his face. After he cleaned himself, he gave me one to try. They taste better than they look. I explained my opinion on these. He looked at me like he doesn't believe me. But I was honest. We sat down at a bus stop. The sun was already going down. This day really flashed in front of my eyes. I hope my parents won't be mad because I didn't come back home. Say, don't you feel any side effects from the vaccine you got today? He has that caring, sweet voice. He sounds like he really cares. Not like he is just asking because we sat in silence for five minutes. Well, no, at least not any of those that were on the paper the nurse gave me. I explained, even though I don't feel any side effects, I have a bad feeling about something. I feel like something will go horribly wrong by the end of this day. I hope my feeling is wrong. We continued talking about everything and everybody. We discovered that we actually know a lot of people that we can talk about. You know Megan Wright? She goes in my class and I absolutely hate her. She's so annoying and she's breaking the girl code non-stop. I wish I didn't. I don't think there is anybody in this town who likes her. I don't even blame them. He shrugged his shoulders. I completely agree with him. We continued gossiping about her for a few more minutes. While he was talking to me about something, I looked at his skateboard that he has been carrying with me the whole day. I always liked skateboarding, but I was never really good at it. Maybe he could teach me. 
Yeah, sure. He stood and stood up. There was a skateboarding park near the bus stop. On the way there, he was telling me bad jokes that he heard from his younger brother. Those jokes were so bad, you just had to laugh. After just three bad jokes, my stomach was hurting so bad. We were almost at the park when I felt a little bit dizzy. My sight was blurry, so I stopped for a second. Are you okay? Noah turned around to check why I lagged behind. I just nodded my head and smiled. I barely pulled that smile. We finally got to the park and took a simple track. I don't want to go on anything crazy when I can't even stand on a skateboard. Noah came behind me, grabbed my waist, and held me while I was standing on the skateboard. Okay, so now you just put one leg down and push yourself. He explained to me even though I knew that. But it was nice of him to try to help me. He was still holding me while I was moving and picking up steps on how to skateboard. We were there for like a half an hour teaching me how to skateboard. Even though I was laughing most of the time, I was feeling horrible. I felt like that bad feeling is about to become true very soon. I just don't have any idea what could actually happen. At this moment, we are standing on the floor watching the sunset. Alright, I will try it on my own now. I stood up and took his skateboard. I was looking at different types of tracks and finally chose one of the simplest. I placed one foot on the skateboard and one on the floor. I was riding the skateboard around, not showing any skills. His eyes were always on me, he was watching me all the time. I wonder if he even blinked since I stood on the skateboard. As I was riding in circles, I was passing by him and our eyes met. We were watching each other as I was passing by on the skateboard. April! He suddenly yelled my name and that brought me back to reality. I quickly looked forward and the next thing I saw was a wall right in front of me. I was ready to hit it, but then I felt someone's arms around me. He really came to rescue me. Sweet. I hugged him as a sign of gratitude. Thank you, I whispered while still in a hug. I felt so safe in his arms. I completely forgot about the virus and all problems just vanished. He pulled away from the hug and placed his hands on my cheek. He pulled my face closer to his. He kissed me. I felt a whole zoo in my stomach. After a minute of us kissing, we pulled away. The following 10 minutes, we were talking and talking. But I was still sick in my stomach. I didn't really take it as something serious because the nurse said it could be a side effect of the vaccine that I took earlier today. And I didn't want to ruin this day. I would never say I would spend such a beautiful and fun day with a boy I saw for the first time in my life. And so I took... I stopped in the middle of the sentence because I needed to cough. I was coughing pretty badly. What is wrong with me? I felt Noah's hand on my back. He didn't know what to do, but I don't blame him. I turned around to him, but I needed to cough again, so I placed my hand in front of my mouth. After I coughed out, as I was about to put my hands down, I saw something red on it. I was coughing blood. I was shocked. I started panicking inside. Did I get the virus? But I just got vaccined. It's the virus, Noah said straight to my face. He wasn't happy about it, but I'm on the edge of dying. Noah, I whispered desperately, praying he's joking. But coughing blood is never a good sign. I stood up and took a step back. I don't want him to get the virus. I felt so weak and my leg just stopped working. Right before I would fall on the floor, Noah caught me. No, Noah, I was too weak to even talk. I love you, April. It was the last thing I heard. At least I had a beautiful last day.